an Alexian technical product owner uh, in a Trigion Docs product. So let's start first to, to, to define what is a domain specific language. So basically, uh, domain specific language is a, a programming language with a high level of abstraction to optimize, uh, optimize for specific class of problems. So please do not uh, confuse DSL with uh, uh, general programming languages like uh, C, C++, C Sharp, or, or Java. So th they can be written to, to run a standalone application programs like uh, applications or interfaces. But uh, there are situations where uh, general programming languages actually just won't work nicely or, uh, or they will introduce a lot of uh, complexity uh, to your solution. So, Domain-specific language is, uh, uh, is a specialized language used for a specific purpose and it used only to solve a specific problem, not, not more. So, and potentially they, they can be used not only by programmers, but also by uh, general users, uh, while uh, regular programming languages can be used only by programmers, so not by just a user. Um, and secondly, let's let's do a small repetition of uh, what is a Trigion Docs collective spaces. So, in a few words, collective spaces provides an <clears throat> easy to use interface to create, edit, and review corporate uh, content. So, it's basically uh, based on editors that uh, Bird just showed to you. So, it's browser-based editor and. Uh, uh, it has commenting functionality for unified collaboration and uh, simplified view for reviewers, uh, advanced tracking of changes together with document history, and of course, workflow and uh, review statuses. So everything integrated with uh, our CMS, with Trigion uh, Docs. And actually our DSL that we built, it was created to prove that it's not only browser-based editors that can be used uh, uh, for easy editing, but also for, also like should be easy to, to configure as well. So it's not easy to use, but also easy to configure. And yeah, of course, uh, editor provides a way to create the data content. So for our content manager and user shouldn't be familiar with an XML because everything is uh, hidden underneath. And yet the content actually has a ton of value and the collective spaces makes it easier to, for regular people to, to get that value. Uh, but unfortunately, it's, it's not so easy to make that usable. And Bert also shows that in, in his presentation. And an, another scenario is that for data, we, we have more than 600 elements and uh, Customers can have uh, their own specialization on top of uh, each element or on top of some elements. So this means that uh, we actually can't have all configuration to, to, to be done in out-of-the-box product. And actually, this, this brings us closer to why we uh, actually need a DSL and why we actually did it. So... Uh, so one of the main drivers is, is the fact, again, that we can provide a configuration for all default elements and the potential specialization in our out-of-the-box product. So we have to find a way uh, to allow people to, to configure it. So, and a uh, second reason is that no, actually, nobody wants to hack into the core of any product to configure it. So if you don't have a nice tool or uh, something good in place to configure a product, so most likely you will try to hack it. But yeah, it, it's not right. And uh, not because, yes, yeah, not right, but also because of uh, release cycles and uh, also, yeah, your release cycle and you want to try to keep your upgrade path as, as simple as possible. So you, you want to avoid different unpredictable uh, merge problems when you do upgrade and different issues. Uh, when you do a hack, when you do a hex inside of the product, and the third reason is that uh, minimal skill set should be required. So, so it's easier to find the right people, and the learning path will be much easier and faster. So, and last but not least is that uh, feedback loop should be fast enough. So, it means that people who will do a configuration they. So you should uh, be able to uh, 
to see exceptions as, as soon as possible. So you, you they don't want to wait ages until application will be built, it, deployed, and uh, only after that they will be able to, to, to see something. So it's, it's quite crucial to get a, a feedback about your configuration as soon as you can. So what potentially we could have uh, without DSL? So if we would decide that, okay, we don't need DSL, let's do something else. So I can say that we probably could have a lot of issues. So first is that uh, skill set required to configure an application without DSL is, is quite big. So the person who will uh, uh, configure who will configure should have a knowledge about JavaScript, XPath, XQuery, NPM, Yarn, JSON, font to configuration documentation and font to development tool. So it's, it's quite a lot of information and learning path is, is, is quite long. So, so this tech is really quite impressive. And I could say that the person should be with at least development background. And if not, then yeah, learning path can take quite a lot of time. And usually customers, I think that they, they don't want to hire uh, special people or spend too much time to teach people how to configure an application. So, and it's, it's, it's also risky. So because people can, can leave a company and, and you will need to go through the process again and again. So you will lose time and uh, yeah, instant money as well. And except of this impressive uh, skill set, we, we could have much more issues. So with, without DSL, you would need to rebuild an application. So which means that you have to rebuild a, a font, which is a core part of editor and our integration with the collective spaces. And this means that customers should be aware of both build processes and it brings complexity to uh, us as well, because in the end, we should be very careful with, with all changes that we would do in our build process to avoid constant trainings of stuff on, on the customer side. Uh, another issue that, uh, that we would need to address is actually to give an access to the source code. So because we don't have any abstraction uh, around the uh, default implementation, you would need to give uh, all source code a part of that. And I think we can imagine how bad it can be. So even if you expose only part of that, it, it will not reduce the amount of issues. And we would not have any control on what people will do there. And uh, <clears throat> upgrade pass will be very complicated, not only for our customers, but also for our support team and, and professional services. And actually, again, development team needs to be careful with any changes that can affect customer configuration. And because, yeah, code will be open. Yeah, and actually, because code will be open, we will not be able to control what customers will do. So our code always should be backward compatible and we shouldn't provide any, any breakable changes. So, which is not nice in, in long term as well. And another drawback is that a customer will need to install a big amount of uh, NPM packages. So during the build process, so of course, uh, some of our customers have like just a local environment, so they don't have access to, to internet. And we can solve that problem to, to, to providing archive uh, NPM packages. But that means that <clears throat> they those NPM packages should be part of the regular product installation. And I think that fact is also not good. And of course, after all of the configuration and build process, customers will need to install application deploy it again and this process can take a while it's it's not the biggest drawback but still it's time consuming and sometimes time is is, is quite important and again a uh, learning process it's can take take a time as well and as well, as i was explaining already before uh, feedback loop still should be quite uh, fast and as much as possible and without dsl we will not be able to achieve that because there is no IntelliSense uh, for configuration syntaxes and uh, uh, the code is open fully. So it's very easy to do mistakes and uh, 
in any place. And in the end, it's hard to find the problem, especially if you're not a programmer. So customers will communicate with our uh, support team, support teams, professional services, and then to engineering. So, and it will be very hard to find the actual problem if you cannot control what customers can do. Yeah, and, and again, because source code is open, easy to do pro uh, a lot of problems, and especially with dependencies. So I will not go in details about dependencies inside the font applications, but there is a lot of them. So if somebody, somebody changed something in the wrong way, everything can be messed up. So as you, as you can see, we, we could have a lot of potential issues. Uh, maybe some of them be, be, is not very critical and we could solve them in a different way. Uh, but I still think that D DSL in this case would work. So because with DSL, you can control much more. So uh, another slide where I want to put your attention is uh, debugging flow. So I, I think it's quite crucial especially with, for people with uh, uh, background experience, they can understand me. So if you do, uh, if you wrote a bad code or you did a mistake, so you want to find it as soon as possible and uh, that process should be, should go smooth and it should be easy to find uh, problems. So, but without DSL, what we could have, we could have a very big uh, feedback loop. So first you will need to configure and during the configuration, again, you don't have any IntelliSense, so you will not be able to see uh, any errors at that moment of time. Then you have to build, then you have to deploy, and only after that you can run your application on test environment uh, to see end result, and only after that you will be able to, to debug the problem. So yeah, quite a lot of steps to just get a feedback about your configuration that you did. Of course, some, some of, errors you can catch during the build process, but those will be not related directly to configuration. It will be more like problems with syntaxes, like you miss a semicolon or something similar to that. So it's not what you want to get in the end. So yeah, as you saw quite a lot of uh, skills people will need to, to get to, to work with application without DSL. So, we put a ton of clever thoughts to, into making DSL work. And actually, this makes our life better for Tridion, Docs partners, and also for our customers. So with DSL, we reduce the skill set to, to, to minimum that we could. So right now, we require only knowledge of XML and actual DSL. So I think XML is always a good uh, choice when you need to build a uh, a complex configurations. And also our professional services, they, they have a lot of experience with working with XML and uh, uh, some other configurations that we have in our products also based on XML. So learning paths is, is quite short. It's only one technology, which is quite easy to learn with big amount of documentation. And of course, uh, because we have a DSL, DSL language that we did has a good, good documentation as I think with a big amount of examples. So it should be easy to start with that. And of course, support team uh, can ask questions as well, but they will ask questions only about uh, XML and DSL, but I think mostly about DSL. So only small stack and much easier to, to, to debug in that as well. But a part of much smaller stack, we, we gain much more benefits. So one of the biggest is that we don't need to rebuild an application. So that also means that you will not have any problems with NPM packages and with uh, source code. So because we do not expose any source code, we do not expose any build processes, nothing. So we only have one, one configuration file outside of the product uh, where people will do all of that configuration. So simple XML file, do whatever you want there and it will not break whole application. And you cannot mess up this whole application. Another benefit is actually upgradability. So we, we can have a lot of releases per year and uh, uh, with this kind of configuration, you can be sure that, yeah, you, you can, 
change uh, some backward compatibility, you, you can introduce breaking changes inside of your product and they will not affect uh, any configurations that customer will do with uh, DSL because DSL still outside of the product. And of course, controllability. So this is one of the, my favorite because you can control what customers can do and what uh, they cannot. So because with DSL, you control what they will be able to implement uh, it requires, yeah, so because you kind of need to define what they will be able to implement. Before that, you need to do a lot of groomings and discussion and understand what, what actual functionality customers want to have in DSL and what they actually want to configure. So in our case, it was quite hard to define because again, a bit, big amount of uh, uh, big amount of data elements that they can configure, big amount of uh, different specializations that they can do. So it was quite tough time, but yeah, I think we could, did a good job and we actually exposed as much as we can. And at least at this moment of time, it's, it's, it's good enough. Uh, and another benefit is the validation. So because we use XML, we also have a schema for that. So, and it's possible to use uh, as a schema to validate the configuration. So for instance, even in a, a basic editor like a Notepad++, uh, it has XML plugin and this possibility to run a validation. So, and I think even more advanced IDs should have XML validation capabilities as well. So there is no problem to check your XML on a fly. So <clears throat> you wrote your configuration, you run a validation and you see like, if your XML is valid by schema, even before you run inside of your application. So yeah, I think you can agree that's quite a big plus. And another benefit is that we use our each deploy to validate and uh, make a configuration part of the product. So I, I will speak about each deploy a bit later, but maybe some of you already uh, familiar with each deploy. So in our case for, uh, DSL, we run only one comment and that comment will validate and make a configuration part of the application. So as you can see, all of those benefits give us a clear indication that we actually did right things and we are moving in, in the right direction with, uh, with our DSL. And I think our partners can, can agree on that as well. So, and another slide about the bug and flow with SDL in this case. So as you can see, it's much more simple. So we have only two, two steps. So configure and run uh, use deploy, uh, and use the each deploy script. So, and yeah, during the configuration, you still can validate and each deploy script also will run another validation for you. So, as you can see with DSL, we achieved another goal, like very quick and fast uh, feedback. And I believe this is quite crucial to have that short feedback loop. Because again, it will save your uh, development type money and uh, of course, nervous, which is quite important these days. <laughs> so yeah, as I mentioned before, uh, yeah, we use each deploy and for yeah, shortly, each deploy is a configuration uh, language for our 3D on Docs content manager system, where actually engineering takes care of all complexity across releases behind uh, a scene. So for DSL, we wrote uh, a special commandlet that actually do four things. So it will validate configuration XML file, <clears throat> which is quite obvious. After that, it will compile the schemas to the format that font understands uh, using the font schema compiler. So without SDL, you would need to do that manually. So now it's automatic. Uh, after that, it will write, uh, create schema location config, uh, config XML file that holds which compiled schema to use for which DTD. So this is also quite complex file and you don't need to care about that. So everything will be done there automatically as well. And after that, it will restart uh, Collective Spaces application pool. So new configuration is taken in account after you refresh your browser. So quite simple, you just write your <coughs> configuration, you execute your each deploy commandlet, and that's it, your, 
you configure your application. So just two steps. And I think you can agree that it's, it's, it's quite awesome. If, especially if you compare like it will be without DSL. Um, so what next? So you think that, yeah, we just use DSL to, to, to configure data, but it's, it's not the case. So we go much further. So, and uh, in addition to data elements configuration, we allow to define custom menu structures uh, in a draft space and define custom sidebars to render custom applications. And I think it's not that's it, and it's not all power of DSL. Potentially something will come in the future as well. And for all of that, just XML knowledge and DSL documentation. And uh, referring to one question that Bert had during his session about if we are going to uh, to do something for annotations and expose that in, uh, in some way of configuration. So at this point in time, there is no plans to, to do like that. So right now we allow only uh, a configuration for data elements, custom menus, and uh, custom sidebar. So time check, still have some time for demo. So just for future reference, how element configuration look like and menu configuration as well. So I will switch to demo right now uh, to show you something from, from DSL and how to configure it. So as you saw from the first uh, presentation, this uh, font and its integration with collective spaces, so much more things already here. So I want to pay your attention on the must head in the toolbar on the top. So it's like only five items at this moment of time. So it's <clears throat> default configuration. So what I, what I will do right now, I have some examples prepared for this session. So uh, this is our uh, behavior configuration XML file in which uh, our customers or professional services need to write a configuration. So for example, right now, uh, I, would, I will add the basic configuration to, uh, to configure a code block element uh, for collective spaces. So as you can see, it's not quite a lot. So just uh, regular, not regular, but it's uh, custom XML uh, text. Uh, and everything is described well inside of documentation, but quickly for this code block, we define the behavior group and with a specific name, which is a call block. We specify XPath, so a system will know uh, which element should be, for which element we should apply this configuration. Then we specify a label that will be visible oops, in UI, some placeholders, and of course we specify yeah, a menu item. So basically it's your uh, insert action. So when you click a button and you need to insert something. So here you specify what will be inserted when you click that button uh, in UI. So right now I only uh, create a configuration just for code block without any specific configuration for menu item. So it's a, a default menu item configuration. So I save it. After that, I need to run this deploy script So as you can see, just uh, one small comment. So people who is uh, who work with each deploy already, they, they can understand it, but yeah, I will not go too deep in details about that one because yeah, lack of time. So I just execute this comment. You will see that it's trying to uh, validate a schema, checking input files and preparing files to upload to the Fonta schema compiler. So as you can see, it validated almost 200 schemas. So this why it was uh, a bit quite, quite slow, but still it's very big amount of uh, schemas. So it's also starting from, from the schema compiler and waiting until it will be started and upload schema bundles, do all of schema compiler will do all of the job. It will do a cleanup, create different files and restart application pool. So after that, 
I can go to my UI and I will just refresh uh, my application. And you see that uh, in the uh, mask heading toolbar, I have already six elements instead of five. And here, as you can see, we have a custom. And inside of this custom, I have like that code block button that actually in my case will insert a code block element. So which I configured in, uh, in configuration file. So, but yeah, so here you see like this a custom, uh, custom title in a mask head. So maybe it's not good for you and, and you want to <clears throat> have a bit different structure. So we allow that as well. So if I want to configure uh, some menu, uh, menu items, I also can do that with uh, a DSL. So let me remove that part, which is not quite necessary right now. So I can use another uh, element like menu configuration where I can specify extra menu. I can specify a label for that extra menu. <clears throat> I can add some description and I can put a reference to my behavior configurations that I did before. So in this case, you can see that I have a reference attribute at code block. And you can see here in my previous configurations that I have menu item with the same ID like in my reference. So basically this element uh, from behavior group will go to my menu configuration in UI. Just to save a bit of, a bit of time, uh, I will use another configuration for sidebar and I will show you it as well in UI already. So let me run a script again. So meanwhile, I can also show you that uh, uh, that validation in, in editor. So for instance, I mistyped this menu configuration and I have menu configuration two. So I can run some validation against the schema and you will see that, yeah, there is information element menu configuration two, this element is not expected. So basically I can check if I did errors and if I misconfigure something. So it's, it's quite nice and I don't need to wait until <clears throat> everything will be built here as well. So configuration should be already in place. So you can see that instead of custom, I already have a, a, a my label, which is a code. It's my, uh, my new menu item. I also have add code block, and, uh, code block uh, button, but already with an icon. So, and I can also can specify here in, 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 uh, with the help of DSL. So it's already there and uh, I can do much more configuration so I can have a drop downs here. I will try to show it a bit later as well, if we'll have time. So, but yeah, I, I did also this configuration for side, sidebar, uh, sidebars. So, and I specify a label and description and uh, URL of applications that will be rendered there as well as some icons and a position. So if I go back to UI, on the right, I will see my custom sidebar, which is called Region Expert Summit. And I will see my custom icons and the custom X application run inside of that custom sidebar. In this case, it's just a website of Fonto. And uh, yeah, I will do a, just a we can copy pass without going in details uh, of all my configuration example to show you how, how we can have a drop downs inside of a menu as well. And probably before I run script, I will do a, some, uh, some mistake here as well, just to damage you that when I run a script, it also will, give me a warning that yeah, there is an invalid element inside of my configuration. So I need to go back, fix it, and run a script again. So while it's building, preparing everything, so what I add here, I add additional uh, data elements and additional configuration for that uh, in a similar way as for code block with, uh, uh, with the labels. Also some contextual menu uh, configuration to, to be able to do right click and insert items as well. Also specify 
uh, what kind of element is that, if it's a, a sheet element or if it's a, a block element. Also I could specify a placeholder text for that. And of course, for all of these elements, I also have uh, a menu configuration uh, to be able to see them in, in UI uh, masthead. So configuration should be already in place. So again, just refreshing application. So right now you cannot see that uh, additional menu that I introduced because that one was done only for specific kind of topics. So in this case, it's uh, API refs. So if I click, I put cursor inside of that kind of topic, I will see my additional API reference uh, uh, masthead item, menu item, so it's in the back. So this one with uh, uh, underline, it's a default one, and this API reference that I additionally created for this kind of topics. And uh, as you can see, I don't have only a button, so I also have a drop-down item here, and this drop-down have another item with drop-down functionality as well, and so on. So you can put it, uh, you can create some nested structure as well. And in my case, uh, where I need to put a cursor to insert it. Yeah, there is also validation against the schema and your cursor position. So if it's not well at place to insert that element, then you won't be able to insert it as in, in, in my case, in my scenario. So basically that's it uh, about DSL and uh, what we did for configuration. So just to summarize, so without DSL, we could achieve the same, but <clears throat> in the end, we will not be able to control it. We will not be able to validate it. We will have, we would have a lot of uh, debug problems and a lot of backward compatibility problems. With DSL, we made it simple. Maybe configuration is not very simple. You need to write a lot of XML, but that one is nicely uh, documented and uh, much easier just to run, uh, write a XML configuration and run one script to validate it and put it inside of uh, your application. 